Good, good morning. Welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me live at market site is Chris White. He's the CEO of Viable Markets, and we're going to tackle the issue of fixed income market structure. Thank you very much for joining us at the market site. And Chris, let's dive right into this. So market participants, policymakers, regulators, the investing public, they have a stake in the U.S. fixed income market. And um, there are a number of challenges that the industry is tackling. What are you guys looking at? Well, I think the stake has been growing over the past decade, and that's one of the things that is most important. I think we're looking at an environment where uh, retail and institutional investors own more fixed income product than they have ever before. And so figuring out how to improve the market is, is something that the regulators have to tackle. I think the regulators are really challenged by figuring out how to calibrate the appropriate regulations for these different fixed income markets because they're, they're so idiosyncratic, they're so different, that a lot of the times what I see is Jetson solutions to Flintstones problems. So figuring out what's appropriate for the bond market or the OTC derivatives market, um, it takes some time. It takes some trial and error. So the same issues that we see in the equity markets, liquidity is always a super hot topic. Is that something that you face in fixed income markets as well? Absolutely. I think that um, you know if you look at the SEC's inaugural meeting in terms of their market structure committee around fixed income, it was like an eight-hour discussion around uh, liquidity in the fixed income market. So I think it's pretty clear that it's the focus um, of most of the regulators and most market participants. However, what's really interesting is that the liquidity discussion in the equity market, I believe, is different. It's more related to the policy changes and the electronic trading that has occurred in the equity markets. What we're dealing with in the current fixed income markets, and particularly the corporate bond market, is a liquidity issue that resembles something that the U.S. equity markets dealt with almost 50 years ago. In the mid-60s, there was this similar issue that equity markets had around really institutional block liquidity, where the large asset managers could no longer feel comfortable trading with specialists and market makers because they felt like they couldn't handle their order flow. That's what's going on right now in some of the fixed income products. Well, um, last year, according to Bloomberg, the head of credit trading at Alliance Bernstein said, our goal by the end of the year, 2017, is that every trade we do is going to be done electronically. Do you think electronic platforms are going to replace dealers' phones? Well, this is sort of this waiting for Godot type atmosphere that's in fixed income right now, where I believe that a lot of fixed income market practitioners are looking at what equity markets look like today, modern day equity markets, they're saying, hey, we want to get there. Let's start to trade our markets the way that they trade them in equities. The problem is, is that there's been probably about four decades of infrastructure development in the equity markets that have not been a part of what's happened in, in many of these fixed income markets. I think that statement uh, that Bloomberg made, it was taken out of context. I don't think Alliance Bernstein was saying we're going to trade everything electronically. What they were saying was, we're going to make sure that every trade that we do is processed electronically, which makes total sense right. because it eliminates, obviously, a lot of the settlement risks that go with booking tickets in a way that is not processed using uh, automation. All right, and to wrap up, all this change always leads to innovation and experimentation. So where are the opportunities lying in the bond market? Um, I think it's, it's similar to the real estate market. It's, uh, you know, it's one thing repeated three times. It's data, data, data. Um, I think that while other markets, more sophisticated markets, are moving on to big data solutions, we do not have basic data in any of the fixed income markets. As, as you saw several months ago, there was actually a debate at the Fed as to when they should do trade reporting around this uh, 14 or $15 trillion treasury market. Um, I, I just think it's, it's a little bit ridiculous that we haven't established price integrity in these markets that we're trying to reform. And price integrity, as we saw 50 years ago in the equity markets, was the key component to the equity markets looking like what they look like today. Everybody's got to be working from the same pricing information in order for you to feel that there's enough confidence in the market to trade it consistently and to actually provide ample liquidity. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us at MarketSite. My pleasure, Jill. All right. And traders, thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.